Today I'm going to do the cutlass bearings, the glide shaft, and put the prop back on. So I didn't shoot any video of the disassembly, uh, but the first thing I did was disassembled this from the engine. So you can see all I did was remove the four screws and took a dead blow hammer and whacked on this turned a little bit, turned the whole, the whole thing, whacked, turned, whacked, turned until this slowly separated and popped off. Then I was able to slide the shaft back and back and forth there. So you can see this, at least on this boat, uh, is just this flange. It was kind of caught on for a little bit until I got it whacked loose. That wasn't too hard. Easy. Uh, actually, uh, removed the old cutter pin, took the nut off and actually it slid off without even needing the prop tool. That was pretty easy. So this is a new prop. The old one had a few dings in it, so I'm swapping that out. Let's see. The hardest part was actually separating this whole thing from the end of the shaft. So other YouTube videos will go into this, but basically put a socket in between down here and then put in some bolts and then slowly snug that up when given some taps with a dead bull hammer and eventually this will pop off the end of the shaft. That was actually the most work of this project. Uh, I've cleaned it up since then, covered it, you know, I've cleaned it up since then, took off the rust, put a new coat of paint on it so that's all ready to go. Uh, the shaft, I just took a rag and some metal polish to that, cleaned that up. So all the parts are ready to go. So the next thing we're going to do is get it under the boat. All right, so I'm going to be doing this on the boat lift in the water. Thankfully, I have an extended lift that gives me enough room to work. So I do not have set screws. You might see people talk about set screws in other videos. So that is ready for me to cut out these two little old cutlass bearings. So all I did was rig up a little seat for myself floating in the water back here. Alright, so we cut through the first bearing. You can see the cut mark there. It actually made a little pop when it cut through. I wasn't sure even with the flashlight. But tapping with the center punch. It just came right out. So there's our first cutlass bearing out. I got tap, cut and tapped the second one out. All right, now we got our first cutlass bearing in, and I'm just using our little homemade uh, tool here to slowly ratchet it in and press it in. Then we'll put it in the front. All right, we got the shaft pushed back in through the cutlass bearings. And visually looking, it's lining right back up with the engine, but it is off to the side, which means it's kind of always been like that. So, yeah, no idea if that's going to really cause me problems down the road with the new, sh uh, the new shaft seal, but eh, might have to address that later. All right, so I got the engine lifted up on some two by fours, at least so I can get in there and fix that leaking oil pan. Hopefully I can just spin out the uh, nut. Hopefully it's just an O-ring or something, gasket. But I'm gonna take advantage of having the engine up since I had the strut, the coupler there, and the shaft uh, tested to make sure everything's uh, in good working order. Had it taken to Marine Hardware. They tested everything and now Give all the parts a clean bill of health. Everything's straight, straight, no damage. So I'm going to take advantage of having the engine up to put the coupler attached to the shaft in through the inside instead of putting it in through the outside. So that way I don't have to put the coupler, or take the coupler off, put it back on. And since I'm going to do that, I got the glide attached. I've already trimmed off half an inch on each side to get the glide on the other side of these old wear marks 
and since I trimmed it and I can't put two hose clamps side by side I'm gonna put some wider stronger T clamps on there so this is ready to slide back in and we will do the shaft later so we got the shaft kind of all cleaned up ready to put back in here we'll do that later okay it looks like we got a patch finished on that little hole at the bottom of the oil pan a little bit of JB weld covering everything all right well, that should be good for a while now I can work on the strut and the drivetrain all right I'm about ready to do the final strut assembly just did the dry fit test after having walled out all the holes here I've got a new fabricated plate and the dry fit test showed the strut actually lined back up in the shaft log Whew, assembly time all right all right all right so we finally have the new prop on got the strut glued back on after having wallowed out the holes had a new backing plate up there made and finally 25 years later we actually have it aligned in the shaft log now we can use the glide dripless seal next step is realigning the engine to the shaft okay after a lot of work we pretty much have the shaft more or less aligned come through the shaft log if it's supposed to all the way on the side and it looks pretty good top to bottom as well the glide is pretty much lining up it's gonna seat on there pretty good now so we took care of the alignment of the shaft got the strut all back down we got our new backing plate that we had fabricated everything lined up after walling at the holes and fixing all that mess so the next step is going to be getting this engine realigned we're off quite a bit so that'll be the next project aligning the engine to the shaft so now that we got the glide lined up now it's time to realign the engine and i think for the side to side i'm going to take a little two by four and just pry over on the engine mounts so we got the lock washers down there loosened we got these things loosened up and here we go okay so just a little bit of side to side prying with the 2x4 on the front and back and that is almost perfectly lined up I think we'll come out here with the feeler gauge next and start seeing how the uh, how it's doing all the way around. Then we'll start doing the ups and downs and get it lined up. Okay, by shifting it back and forth a little bit and tweaking on these little adjusters, I have got it to 0 .003 all the way around top side bottom and side I was getting pretty dang close. I think we'll try for 0.002 with a fine bit of fine tuning. 
a little back and forth, mostly on the upper front side. I have got it nice and snug on all four sides at 0 0.002. Nice and, oh, nice and snug there. That's nice and snug on that side. That's nice and snug on the bottom. It's about the same snugness on that side. So now that we've got 0 0.002, let's try to get down to 0 0.001. All right, I think we got the engine realignment done. So I got making uh, just adjustments to these engine mounts up and down and then going left and right at the front, I got the coupler. So four one thousandth of an inch doesn't go through top, bottom, left, or right. I got it to three thousandth of an inch that barely goes in top, bottom, left, and right and feels the same on every side. And the two one thousandth nicely slides in and feels about the same top, bottom, left, and right. So I think we can call that good on the alignment and we'll just tighten it all back up all right and that is a wrap i got the glide tightened back up got everything lined up got the shaft coupler hooked back up to the transmission got the engine mounts all locked down i think we are done with this part of the project Whew. All right, and it looks like that is the end of the engine work. Everything's done, electrical, all the plumbing, the electronics all check out. It even starts up. Now it's just gonna be a while before I get it back in the water and water test it. Woohoo!